What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. In Fallout 4, there are plenty of perks for you to choose from. You can choose how many ranks you want out of these perks and use them all in combination to make some sensational character builds. Sounds familiar, but this video is not a build. Today we're going to be talking about Fallout 4, but in particular the 5 worst perks. The 5 perks aren't ordered and they're based on our own opinion, although we're trying to be as objective as we can. We considered not only what the perks do, but also how much investment they take to acquire. For example, Aqua Boy is actually not on this list as we find it to be quite useful, especially with the addition of the Far Harbor DLC and the fact that it only takes one perk rank to get. It is a convenience perk, but it's not bad, even though the second rank isn't too crash hot. The perks on this list aren't just convenient, most are downright awful, so let's just get into it. Straight off the bat, let's talk about Ghoulish, arguably the most shit perk in Fallout 4. You need 9 points of endurance to get it, and the first 3 ranks of ghoulish make radiation restore your lost health, and with the third rank it even causes some feral ghouls to become friendly. With Nuka World there's a fourth rank that makes rad damage slowly heal, restoring health in the process. This was Bethesda's attempt to fix a broken perk, but it's very much still a crappy one. The reason for this is because it's extremely situational, and it costs so many perk points. So firstly, the first three ranks suck. You need to be taking radiation damage to heal, but this doesn't prevent the accumulation of rads, so as you heal you also get more rads and the health bar and the radiation bar meet in an awkward middle. The more radiation you're taking, the faster you heal, but even this is useless because the radiation is still lowering your potential health. You also don't want to be in radiation anyways, as there's no real advantage. It's kind of like saying that this perk only gives you an advantage if you spend all your time in highly irradiated areas fighting monsters, but even then it's just not the case because one, you don't heal that fast, and two, you're taking radiation damage which still negatively affects you. If you get rad resistance, it still doesn't counter it well. It just reduces the positive and the negative effects. It's total rubbish, and there are better perks to get. I recommend you get Medic, so you can just use a Red Away and a Stim Pack to fully heal up, and those two things are found everywhere, and you needing to heal up is far more applicable to the common situations of the game. Finally, with the fourth rank, it makes builds like our Rad Man possible, although that's only because we're using the Assaultron Head Pistol. If you're making that specific build or using that as your main weapon, get these perk ranks, but if not, give it a massive miss. Even Life Giver is better because you'll be regenerating health all the time. Even Solar Powered is better to regenerate health and lose radiation at the same time. Ghouls randomly becoming friendly is only good for roleplaying too, as ghouls aren't the most menacing foes, and overall ghoulish is slow and never worth the 4 perk points unless you're making a very specific character. Next up we have a perk that a lot of players who are brand new to Fallout 4 will defend because they get angry because they picked this perk. Vans is a crap one, and to get it you only need one intelligence. Sounds about right to me. What it does is give you a sweet pair of shoes to show all your friends. Just kidding, it actually just lets you hold down the VATS button to highlight the path in-game to your quest target. Then Nuka World added a second rank actually, which adds plus two perception, but let's talk about the first rank. This is basically the equivalent to the Clairvoyant spell from Skyrim, and with both games running on the same game engine, it probably is the Clairvoyant spell from Skyrim. This is absolutely crap for a few reasons. Firstly, you can just save this perk point and use it to progress a useful perk you're going with. Secondly, the path it shows isn't even good. It's like the kind of path that an AI would use. You could just cut through the bushes, you could go on some exploration and hop over a fence or get over this ledge here yourself, or you could just follow the road because you're not blind. But if you want a perk that puts a green line on the main road, just get this perk. Anyways, point being, it's not the best. The only savior for this perk is if you're a character who wants to have really high perception. The second rank of Vans simply gives you plus two perception, and this can take your perception from 10 to 12. It could also be handy to save a perception heavy character who accidentally chose Vans early on, as now they can spend one perk point on the second rank, meaning they've spent 2 points on Vans total to get 2 more points of perception, plus the silly green line feature. Overall, as you can see, this perk is pretty bad, but thankfully if you got the first rank, you only wasted 1 perk point instead of wasting 4 on something like Ghoulish. The third perk on this list is Awareness, and it's also the third perk in the Perception stat line. There used to just be one rank to this, although Nuka World added another one. If you haven't been aware, Nuka World tried to fix a lot of the worst perks in the game by adding new ranks, although it wasn't too successful with the last perks I mentioned, and with this one. So what rank 1 of Awareness does is let you know the damage resistances of your VAT's targets. So you look at an enemy, you select them using VAT, and you can see what level they are, what their damage, energy, radiation, and poison resistances are, 
all of that stuff. Anyways, the only real advantage with this is knowing what kind of weapons your enemies are more susceptible to. So the idea is that you can see a robot or a super mutant and know they're more susceptible to energy weapons. This is fine for characters who are going to have an arsenal of different weapons for different enemies, but for most builds they have one or two weapons which they use as their end game weapon for the whole game, meaning it doesn't matter if the enemy is weaker against a certain type because you simply aren't using it. The other reason why I don't like this first rank is because exact resistances don't matter. You just just learn what different enemy types are weak against as you play through the game. Just save the perk point and observe what weapon type does more damage. And if you're only using one weapon, then it won't make a difference for you anyway, but if you want to use more than one, then you can switch it up. The only thing this perk rank gets a pass on is roleplaying. Like the Living Anatomy perk from Fallout New Vegas, it's cool to have a character who is very analytical and precise, but in terms of effectiveness, give it a miss. But what about the second rank? Well, this rank actually gives you a real advantage. Knowing their weaknesses lets you attack more efficiently. You gain a 5% increase to your VAT's hit chance and damage dealt to your VAT's targets. This isn't bad, damage is always good, as is extra accuracy, but let's not pretend that 5% more accuracy is a big deal. If you're a character who's going to be using perception, VATs, and you care about VATs accuracy, then you're going to have high perception, better perks, and high accuracy already as a result. You'd be better off diving into bloody mess with two perk points for 10% more damage in VATs and out of VATs with anything, instead of spending two points for a minuscule amount of bonus accuracy, a tiny amount of bonus damage only in VATs, and the ability to see enemies' resistances which you can just learn through experimentation. Next up we have another perk which is quite good for roleplaying but not much good for anything else. Pickpocket. This is another perception perk and it's accessible to everyone as you only need your perception level to be 1 in order to access it. At each of the 4 ranks, pickpocketing becomes 25% easier, for a total of it being twice as easy at rank 4. At rank 2 you can place a live grenade in a person's inventory and at rank 3 you can steal equipped weapons. At rank 4 you can steal all equipped items like armor and clothing. So why is this perk so bad? Well, it mainly comes down to the fact that stealing from people is quite useless. For one, you need to be stealthy and hidden while you do it and two, you can earn caps 50 times faster through effective looting. People really don't have anything on them that's really worth stealing, and it's especially bad because to be good at stealing anyway, you need to invest a massive 4 perk points. But what about stealing weapons from enemies? Well, there's almost never a case where enemies have a way better weapon than you, and if they do, you can just kill them anyway, and that's basically what's wrong with this perk. It also lets you steal armor, but you can just kill them and take it. Innocent people don't tend to carry good weapons, so you won't need to steal it from them. In the same sense as Skyrim, it can be fun to go around and make everyone naked if that's what you're into, but overall the perk is definitely more of a novelty. I only see these ranks working well on a pacifist build, as you can disarm people's weapons so they become less effective, but then again if you're a stealthy pacifist, why not sneak past unseen? Same thing goes for the live grenade. Why cause a commotion if you're a stealthy thief? Why not just throw the grenade at their feet if you're throwing a grenade? There's a lot that's wrong with this perk efficiency wise, but the one redeemable fact is that it is really fun. Take our thief build for example. He could just go around and shoot everyone in the head with his silenced pistol, but sometimes it's way cooler to just put a grenade in someone's pocket and jump off the balcony as the bodies explode and come flying down behind you. The live grenade is probably the best part to the perk. It's quite simply hilarious and it is still effective. It's just that there's better ways to get the job done, especially without using your precious perk points. The final thing I want to say is that there is actually one hidden niche advantage and that is stealing a unique piece of clothing from someone that would otherwise be unobtainable. But if you want want to waste 4 perk points on a piece of clothing, that's up to you. Consider it only if it's crucial to roleplaying your specific build. And finally, we have worst perk number 5. This one is Lead Belly, and it's all about taking less radiation from eating and drinking. Get all 3 ranks from this perk and you won't take any radiation from eating or drinking. This perk isn't worth getting for a few reasons. Firstly, stim packs and right away are super common. Just invest in medic and use these instead. Secondly, you're able to easily and commonly cook your own food to remove the radiation before consumption. Thirdly, there's not even that many rads in food and water anyway. It's just very easy to save perk points. Even just get solar powered to remove your radiation and to heal yourself so you don't need tons of radiation infested food. Like I said, right away and stim packs are everywhere. As you get into higher levels, most food becomes shitty anyway because your health is so high and that's why stim packs are percentage based instead of working off a fixed amount. But what about survival mode? Well in survival mode you have to eat and drink and here it does sound genuinely useful but it's not. You can still stick to right away and stim packs for your health bar concerns and then when it comes to eating and drinking just cook your meals and produce 
produce clean water, and as mentioned, there's hardly any radiation in most of the consumables you'd eat and drink anyway to satisfy survival mode. Those three perk points are so much better used elsewhere. Subscribe for more Fallout 4 content like this, we're producing Fallout content relatively often, and we'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments below on what videos you want to see next. Like the video if you enjoyed it, follow us on our social media if you're interested, and I'll nerd out with you again very soon in the next video.